Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a while, we haven't done something in this channel again and um, due to my work-life balance and stuff like that. But um, today I just wanted to do a quick tutorial just so we can get up to speed with what we've been missing. So today we're gonna be doing a filter traveling stabby FM sound. This sound is one of the most prominent sounds in Psytrance. You would hear it like almost everywhere. Um, so yeah, we'll be using Serum as our VST today and we'll be on Bitwig. So let's just go ahead and dive in and have a look. Okay, here we are on Bitwig and the sound itself sounds like this. So hopefully that gave us a good idea of what we're looking for. Um, I'm just going to make this kind of bigger just so we can focus on this channel here. And pretty much we have our patch over here on Serum. Um, what I'm going to do is to close this out, create a new instrument of Serum, of course. So on Bitwig, you can just go over here and you can type Serum. Okay, so let's start uh, with the you know most fun fundamentals of the sound, which is um, the oscillators, pretty much. Um, the first oscillator is going to be this one. Shrats right here. And the second oscillator is going to be this one. Let's just hear what we got. Okay, pretty basic, that's good. Um, I think what I did here was to push this an octave higher. And the second one, I put it up octave lower, actually. Okay, uh, we enable our filter over here. And we're going to be modulating this filter with our velocity. But before that, let's um, apply to both oscillators here. Um, pretty much, uh, we can crank this up a little bit. Put the resonance a little higher we're gonna get more resonance with a filter um, fx filter so you don't want to push the resonance too much over here um, we can push this down and as i said before we're going to modulate it with the velocity so we can just pop this velocity down here all right moving on with modulations we pop the velocity over here on the cutoff and we're going to I'm gonna show you how we actually, you know, randomize that velocity right now. But before that, let's add this LFO on the position of um, the second oscillator here. And I don't wanna do it all the way. You can see it's already, I think it's already unipolar. Yeah, it's already unipolar. So, and I want it to be pretty slow so i want this to travel over not a quarter of a note but eight bars so this will you know this effect will happen in such gradual way um, but it'll still give it that like little kind of variation and let's just hear what we got so far so this is good and you hear this you go like man that sounds like shit um the reason for that is because we want to take the level down of this first oscillator so this second oscillator is pretty much gonna take over um the sound and this first one is kind of like a complementary um providing more harmonics to make it kind of richer if that made sense but yeah, so we're gonna push this down quite a lot Okay, check in. And one last modulation I'm going to add is to the wave table of this first oscillator. And that's going to be also responding to the velocity values from our meter, from our meter notes. Um, so that's pretty much it for the first page of Serum, I would say. Let's go into the effects. And before we go into the effects, let's just hear how it sounds. 
And I'm going to try to press it with different, you know, velocity levels just so we can hear how this velocity is affecting or modulating our parameters here. So here I'm just going to go over and apply everything uh, from the patch and I'll be right back. But you can you'll be able to see the final picture over here. Okay, so this is what the effects uh, panel look like. Um, you can see we have a distortion. Um, we had a diode and then we have this much of drive, this much of on the mix. Um, and then after distortion, we have a compressor. And um, I enable multiband over here or multiband as you wish. Um, and then this filter is going to be the actual kind of driving force of the sound and we're going to modulate this cutoff in a little bit um, but we're going to do it with uh, Bitwix modulators um, just so you know uh, we give some sort of authenticity to the sound um, and of course at the end we have our um, mighty delay so let's hear how it sounds right now So as you could hear over there, I want this cutoff to go berserk, you know. So um, for that, um, we're going to use Bitwix devices. So this is pretty much um, done with Serum's part. The rest is going to be kind of on Bitwig. So I'm going to close this out for now. And I'm going to go over here on Bitwig. And I'm gonna copy our MIDI pattern over here. So we want it to go something like this, right? I mean, these are pretty big MIDI notes if you look at them over here. So if you look at these MIDI notes, the idea behind them actually come from um, applying the laws of kind of Euclidean rhythms. Um, so they're pretty much elongated MIDI notes uh, within the laws of Euclidean rhythms. If you don't know what Euclidean rhythms are, uh, Dash has a really good video about it. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can check that out. But pretty much, um, you're not putting anything on like weird offbeat parts. We just take it from, let's say, you know, the second second beat over here on the, on the first bar and then we do that. Like we don't start, let's say, on this like kind of off beat. Um, but rather we started on the start of this um, second beat over here, um, if that makes sense. And then we extend it up to the, you know, beginning of the second bar. Um, and, you know, we don't leave it somewhere here where it, it would kind of like go off beat. And the reason for that is because we want to use an arpeggiator to um, trigger these notes. So these are really long notes. If you play them just by themselves, they're going to sound like this. And I mean, that, that's a cool sound in itself, but we want it to be more kind of um, rhythmical. And for that matter, we're gonna open Arpeggiator on Bitwig device, as a Bitwig device. And then we edit over there. So on the Arpeggiator, um, you have to put it before Serum, first of all, um, of course. And um, another thing I wanna do is to basically put this gate value down and put this velocity value down. Remember we use velocity within um, Serum. So here is the part where we're going to uh, modulate that velocity so we can basically go ahead and start modulating these parameters here. And in order to apply that modulation in Bitwig, you just click on this kind of like sex icon button and you're gonna go to random so these are bitwigs you know a bunch of modulators for each device and you can use these you know um, however you like you can combine them or you know you can just go crazy with that we'll keep things pretty simple over here so when we add our modulators on Bitwig, you can click on this little arrow here and that kind of opens up another pop-up menu. And what we want to do is to click on this arrow thing, arrowish thing and we want to start applying it to our gate 
just so we can get that you know different variations different lengths on each of our 16th notes and i'm going to apply it here and by the way how do i know it's going to be a 16th note i click on right here and then i tell it to go 16th notes you can see the note note icon changed over here it's got like kind of fetters now and it also tells you it's the 16th note over here um so yeah we are now modulating our gate and that's gonna give us this different you know long um that's gonna give us this different um note lengths um so it could be you know less than 1 16th or it, it, it can go up to 1 16th and um so let's decrease the velocity first and then apply this modulator to our velocity as you can see if it goes up to one that means you're in 3.25 right now if you go up to um 96.75 you're gonna hit 100 velocity um maybe we don't want to do that maybe we can just leave it somewhere at 70 so it will change between 3.25 to you know um 73.25 so you can click on this again and you can see over here if you actually click on the modulator itself on the left hand side over here you can see what values you're modulating and you can also see here these things are going nuts um, one thing I want to mention is that this button here makes it bipolar but uh, it's by default it's off so by default this random modulator is um, unipolar and that's that's what we want to do and here you know you have these modes you can you know just let it go free you can let it reset with the note or you can just sync it let's just hear how it sounds right now okay that sounds pretty good but we don't get any filter traveling right i mean this is the idea of this tutorial was to get that filter traveled um and we're almost there guys so Basically, I want to get this filter in Serum and I want to modulate this cutoff parameter. For that, uh, what I do on Bitwig, um, maybe there's a you know faster way to do this. So if you guys know any faster way, please let me know. I press on this cutoff and that kind of brings automatically that cutoff knob on top of my Serum device on my uh, device channel here. And just like what we did with the random modulator here uh, we're going to add a modulator to this knob over here which automatically then you know goes to our vst this is a really great way to enhance your game on the field of modulation i feel like this is kind of where bitwick starts to shine and i have a lot of bad things to say about Bitwig just because I'm coming from Cubase myself and I do miss a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to audio editing. But um, I feel like as a side trans producer, um, this is kind of a really good way to start, you know, enhancing your production um, within the, you know, boundaries of your uh, digital audio workstation. Of course, you can get plugins, you can do all this and that, but um, Bitwig just kind of offers this like right out of the box and I think it's real valuable. So as I said, um, we just again click on this arrow button right here and then just like what we did before, we go on this random. But this time you wanna adjust the parameters a little bit more. Um, first of all, let's apply it to this knob over here because th this knob that comes up top here it changes whatever you click on your VST. So this is kind of like a dynamic highlighter, I think. So let's say I wanted to press on this wavetable position on oscillator two. That just pops up over here on the Bitwig device. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of, you know, maybe a caveat of this. You just have to press this first, apply your modulation, and then you click on whatever else you want on your VST because 
if you do anything else, then it's just going to change over here. And if you want to find the parameter you're looking for, you can go down on this list. Also, you can actually search for it. So if I did filter FX filter. So, you know, they have like these little um, and biggest names. I mean, I, I don't know what to exactly look for. So that's why I just press on this cutoff here to get it highlighted on top here. So anyways, just apply your random modulator. So as soon as I applied that, you can see this knob within Serum, it starts getting, you know, twisted. So, and that is within um, this range. So I just wanna kind of pull it back, kind of like where it starts. So maybe it starts a bit lower. It's too much going to the highs right now. Okay. And maybe I can pull it down a little bit. Some like that should do. One thing I don't like in this modulation is that it's kind of too blocky. So Bitwig tells you what kind of signal flow it's sending to your parameter. And you can see, you know, this line that's going behind the dice over here. That's kind of like the signal flow that's going to the modulation of that parameter. Um, and that's coming from here. Basically, um, you just kind of want to change it all the way to the other side. So your signal flow is more kind of going gradually rather than, you know, sending it like maybe um, to like kind of one zero binary style. Um, but that's that, that's not the best explanation for it. Just because you have more of that over here. So this kind of gives you zeros and ones. It's going to give you more of a step approach, but I, I'm not going to get into that. So just leave this third one by itself. You can double click on it and then it defaults to its actual, um, whatever it comes, you know, initially. Um, so anyways, as you can see over here, um, our filter is getting modulated again in a more gradual manner. So you can see again on the uh, Serum VST as well, the way it's getting modulated is a lot more gradual. So let's just hear how it sounds right now.
by the way, if this thing is blinking, just make sure to click on it because if it's blinking, it means that you armed it to modulate whatever parameter you're dragging over here. So you might do something unintentionally. And um, yeah, just like uh, um, buyer, buyers beware on this side. If it's blinking, just turn it off. So here, um, as I said, there is some low end coming from that sound and I just wanna pretty much EQ it out and I can use Bitwig's EQ for that. And you can just drag it to maybe somewhere here. So we're giving that space to our um, kick and bass in our snare too. <laughs> guys that was about it for today um short and sweet and um thank you for watching the tutorials please let me know um if you like this and or if you disliked it as well um let me know down below in the comments um yeah apologies for not having been around for a long time again as i said uh the work-life balance sometimes it's just like is not healthy on that note i think i am planning on doing like a little giveaway just to give back to the community because this community has given me so much and i really appreciate that and i want to give something back so i am planning on doing kind of like a giveaway kind of a campaign um so yeah stay tuned for the details of that campaign stuff and yeah i hope to see you in the next video bye